Telomere shortening is a hallmark of aging. Even worse though, telomere shortening negatively impacts other hallmarks, including genomic instability, mitochondrial dysfunction, and stem cell exhaustion. More specifically, telomere length declines during aging for both men and women. On the y-axis, we've got LTL or leukocyte telomere length. This is telomere length inside of white blood cells plotted against age from 20 to about 100 years old. And then we can see that age-related decline for both men and women with average values of around 7.75 kilobases in youth, whereas in advanced age, closer to 5 kilobases, more specifically in centenarians or 100-year-olds. Now, a central premise of the channel is to slow aging by optimizing biomarkers of as many organ systems as possible, and telomere length is on that list. Now, I currently have 15 telomere tests that date back to 2022, so in this video, we'll go over what's my data, and additionally, which factors are significantly correlated with telomere length, with the goal of getting them as close to youthful as possible. So first, what's my data? To find out, I sent blood to True Diagnostic. If you want to measure your own telomere length, discount link in the video's description. Now, on to the data. On the y-axis, we've got telomere length plotted against the collection date. In 2022, over three tests, average telomere length was 7.05 kilobases. And then I started testing more often, such that in 2023, the average was 7.13 kilobases. Now, I could stop here and say, hey, look, I've re reversed telomere length, but the fact is I don't know if three tests in 2022 is representative of a full year, full year's worth of data. Whereas in 2023, that's probably closer to a full year's worth of data as eight tests is a lot relative to the three tests in 2022. All right, so what about in 2024? So thus far, the average in 2024 is off to a good start, 7.12 kilobases. But all is not great because for the last test, in May, uh, uh, May 28th, 2024, it was 7.07 kilobases. And for two other tests, <clears throat> three of the last five tests, we can see that telomere length was 7.06 and 7.08 kilobases, which is closer to the 2022 data than 7.13 kilobases or above. Now, these data, at least the most recent data, three of the last five tests, suggest that I have a lot of room for progress to get back to that 7.75 kilobase value that's found more likely in youth. So this is technically a weak spot right now in my data, and I think it's instructive to show the good and the bad and how I intend to improve uh, current weak spots. So with that in mind, can telomere length be further improved? So to address that, which factors are significantly correlated with telomere length and not in published studies and others in my own data? So what's the approach? So for those who are familiar with the channel, apologies if you've seen this approach a billion times, there may be people who are new who haven't seen it. So since 2015, I've weighed all of my food with a food scale. And then I entered those daily food amounts into Chronometer, discount link below for Chronometer if you wanna use it yourself. And then I manually enter those data into a spreadsheet. So then each blood test has a corresponding average dietary intake. In other words, if there's a 50-day period in between blood tests, I take the 50-day average dietary intake, and that then lines up with telomere length or any other biomarkers that I measured on that day. And then I can calculate correlations for diet and even supplements with biomarkers. So with that in mind, I took a look at 97 comparisons for telomere length with foods, macro, and micronutrients, with the top portion of that list shown here. And the full correlation list, as all of the correlations, are on Patreon in a specific tier. So onto the list. In the middle, we've got the correlation coefficient, lowercase r. And then on the right, we've got the p-value as the measure of statistical significance. And we can see that each of the uh, foods or nutrients that are on this list have a p-value less than 0.05 as the measure of statistical significance. Atop the list are cloves with a correlation coefficient of 0.7, which suggests that a relatively higher clove intake in my data is significantly correlated with a longer telomere length. And again, I'm not trying to imply causation. These are correlations. So going beyond cloves, broccoli, calcium, salt, and onions, onion intake are significantly correlated with a longer telomere length over those 15 tests. Conversely, trimethylglycine, and this isn't supplemental trimethylglycine, uh, and although chronometer doesn't track it, 
based on published uh, data on PubMed, I track it on my own as it's a methyl donor, trimethylglycine. It has three methyl groups. So I've been tracking methyl groups, uh, methyl group intake to potentially impact epigenetic age, whether Dunedin Pace or Horvat. So dietary intake of trimethylglycine, the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. Note that my ratio isn't anything too crazy. It's always less than two to one. Zinc and saturated fatty acids, SFAs, are significantly correlated with a shorter telomere length. All right, so what do I do with this data? With the goal of optimizing telomere length, I don't know if any of these or all of these are related to increasing or shortening telomere length. So the goal is to follow as many of the correlations as possible. So with that in mind, for the next test, I've pushed cloves, broccoli, calcium, uh, and onions while reducing saturated fatty acid intake, mostly from coconut butter. So I've made those five changes towards the higher end or lower end of my range, respectively. So higher for the greens and lower for the reds, i.e. saturated fatty acids. Now, what will happen after I retest? So after I retest, I then recalculate the correlations based on that data, and then spurious correlations will weaken. So what that means is if cloves aren't significantly correlated or aren't involved in mechanisms that impact telomere length, if I increase them and telomere length doesn't further increase or stay relatively high, that suggests that cloves are not directly involved in mechanisms that impact telomere length. So its correlation will weaken. It will be less than 0.7. So using that approach, the spurious correlations will weaken and the correlations that may be causatively involved, and again, emphasis on may be. The only way to find out is by continuously doing this experiment over and over and over until I have enough data for the story to become more clear. So that's the approach. The next test is scheduled for about two weeks from now. So stay tuned for that update video coming sometime sometime in September. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic testing, NED quantification, or microbiome composition, at-home metabolomics, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, which includes ApoB, but also Grimage, green tea, dye tracking with Crone Meter, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Dye Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.